Today, we're going to be going over the best PC settings for the Modern Warfare 2 beta. We're not going to be doing all the crazy stuff like we normally do, like going into Windows settings or the NVIDIA control panel settings or anything like that. We're just going to be doing in-game settings and then the best color settings as well for this game. So if you are watching this video in the future, when the game has fully released, there probably is an updated settings video with the even better settings. So go check the channel. There will be a playlist called updated settings videos. And that goes for everyone watching while the beta is live as well make sure you click the subscribe button because I will be updating these settings when the full game is released. But starting here under display mode, we're playing in full screen. As I always tell you guys, full screen gives you the least amount of input lag possible. And then screen refresh rate and display resolution, make sure both of these are set correctly. Otherwise, you're not going to be getting the most out of your monitor. And then dynamic resolution, you want this off. Aspect ratio, leaving this at automatic should be okay. And then V-Sync for both gameplay and menus, we want both of these off. V-Sync can help Help fix screen tearing issues but at the cost of a lot of input lag so we definitely want these off i mean i guess you could turn it on in the menu if you really want because input lag doesn't really matter if you're in the menu anyway but i would just recommend turning both of these off and then for custom frame rate limit i like to put this at custom and then we click show more and i drag the gameplay custom frame rate limit all the way up to 300. scrolling down for display gamma you want this at 2.2 but if you have your pc hooked up to like a, a nice tv or whatever you could try setting this to 2.4 and it'll look a lot better for you and then brightness is self-explanatory you just set this to where the middle logo is barely visible and then focus mode you want this turned off and high dynamic range otherwise known as hdr you want this turned off unless you have like an oled monitor which hardly any of those even exist in the world so you probably don't have one and if you do have an oled monitor you definitely know it but then again if you have your pc plugged into some really nice 4k tv or oled tv having hdr turn on could be good but for the most of us we want this turned off moving over to the quality tab make sure that your render resolution is set correctly you just want this to be at 100 and then there's a few options here dlss image scaling and amd f FSR that are all grayed out for me and the reason they're grayed out is because I have Fidelity FX Cast on. Fidelity FX Cast makes your game look incredible. So what you want to do is you want to turn it on and then you want to click on show more and you want to adjust the strength. I prefer it all the way up to 100, but if the game's looking a little too sharp on your monitor, you could drag it down a little bit to your liking, but I would recommend putting it at 100 and then going from there. But the thing is, you can turn off Fidelity FX Cast and you could turn on AMD FSR here and I would put it in the quality mode right here and it'll give you a massive boost your fps as you can see here but the only problem with using the amd fsr is that the game looks it, it kind of looks like crap compared to how the fidelity fx cast looks and that's why personally i would recommend turning fsr off and then using fidelity fx cast but if you're on a really low-end pc and you're really really struggling for frames this is something i would definitely recommend trying out something that is really bothering me about this game though is anti alien scene they only give us two options for anti-aliasing and there's no option to turn it off which really does suck because anti-aliasing is just absolutely killing our frames in this game and i'm hoping in the full game we'll be able to actually turn it off but for now i would recommend just using this first setting here and then for nearby level of detail i do have this set to low and then texture resolution, I do have this set to normal. If you have an insanely good graphics card with a lot of VRAM, I mean, you could turn this up to high and it'll be just fine. You won't lose too many FPS. And if you have a low end graphics card, you might want to put this on low or very low. This is really going to kind of judge on the kind of PC you have. For me personally, I like to put it on normal. And then I put texture filter and isotropic on high particle quality on high and then i have bullet impacts and sprays enabled shader quality i have on low tessellation we have this turned off and then on demand texture streaming i believe was on by default but i would recommend turning this off otherwise the game is downloading textures in the background and that, that could cause a little bit of lag so we don't want that and then streaming quality we have this on normal shadow map resolution we put this on very low shadows are a huge performance hog so i definitely recommend putting it on very low and the difference between very low and some of these higher settings honestly i don't really notice a huge difference spot shadow quality we want on low cast spot shadows and cast sun shadows we want both of these turned on and then particle lighting we want this on low ambient occlusion off ssr off and then nvidia reflex 
low latency. If you do have an NVIDIA graphics card, I recommend putting this just to on, not on plus boost. Putting it on will give you a more consistent frame rate, whereas putting it on plus boost can give you lower input latency, but it doesn't seem to be quite as stable. Depth of field and world motion blur. We want this off. Weapon motion blur off. We want all that off. And then film grain, we have this turned all the way down. Moving on over to the view tab. I personally play with my field of view at 120. I know FOV is kind of personal preference, but no matter what number you have this at, you should always have ADS field of view set to affected. This is going to help your recoil control just immensely. It's going to make it so there's a lot less visual recoil. And then weapon field of view here. I set this to wide because on the right here, it says if you have it set to wide, the weapon looks smaller. And I figured if the weapon looks smaller, I'll be able to see a little more around me. So that was kind of my thought process behind that. So I put that to wide. Then I cranked up the third person field of view right here as well, even though I'll probably never play that game mode anyway. And then I also made sure that I had first and third person camera movement turned all the way down so my screen isn't shaking all crazy like whenever there's an airstrike or a nade going off or something. And then one last thing, let me just show you guys the color settings I am currently using on the MW2 beta. They are literally the exact same color settings I was using in the last Warzone settings video, and they seem to be working great in the MW2 mw2 beta but when the full game does release i'll really dive deep into this stuff and all these settings and color settings and everything so if you're new here make sure you click the subscribe button because we'll be doing all of that as soon as the game fully releases as well as on warzone 2.0 we'll be doing the same thing and i'll also be streaming the beta pretty much all weekend so if you want to catch me live on twitch at all link is in the description i'd really appreciate it if you go drop a follow over there and i'll see you guys in the next video here's the web peace